Good morning, everyone. This is Dan with Sydney's Angels and Bennett's Rainbows. Today, I want to show you around my fish room, give you a 2024 update, show you lots of new rainbow fish we're working with. So my fish room's got about 40 tanks. On the left here, we've got two 75-gallon tanks. To the right of that, we've got a metal rack full of breeding tanks. The first two levels are mostly 20-gallon highs. The top level is 10-gallon tanks. Got like a little workbench and junk area right there, a little slop sink. Um, some carbon filters. This is where I keep my osmosis water. Uh, I've got a little hexagon shrimp tank right here. Over here is some more 10 gallon tanks. And in the middle of this area, we've got a 100 gallon stock pond full of guppies and odds and ends. Master Breeder Dean's fry system. We've got a 29 gallon rainbow fish tank. We've got a little five gallon tank right here. Two 40 gallon tanks. We've got a 75 gallon river tank over here. 55 gallon tank over there that is extremely dirty. Also have three tanks upstairs. Okay, so I think the first tank I'm gonna show you is this 20 gallon Melitania Parva. These are a, sometimes referred to as the dwarf sunset rainbow fish. This is the Gary Lang strain. These guys are pretty small. They're like an inch, maybe an inch and a quarter. And look at the color on them already. It's just ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Um, for, for rainbow fish this small, that's pretty pretty amazing that they have that much color already. So I'm sure that these are really good genetics. Uh, obviously, they came from Gary Lang. And really happy with the juvies I've been getting out of them. And yes, these will all be buy one, get one free. So if you're interested in getting some beautiful sunset rainbow fish, that's what we got in the 20 gallon right now. Next door, we've got the Chilotrina Al and I will poke a red variety. These are going to be a gorgeous fish. My breeding group really isn't full grown yet. They've still got a lot of growing to do, but already I'm starting to see some awesome colors. And they're very prolific. I've gotten a ton of fry from these guys already. And they're, if you look up here, all these littler fish actually hatched and grew up in the tank with these adults or sub adults. So I, I never hatched these out in a separate tank. They just kind of, the adults weren't eating them and they just were allowed to grow to this size already. This next tank is the Melitania species Kelly Tawa. These are pretty new addition to the hobby. And honestly, I think I can safely say one of the most popular rainbow fish right now. Everyone wants these. I get emails all the time asking about them. And I think you can see why they're absolutely beautiful. They stay... Uh, a little bit smaller than a lot of species of rainbows. Absolutely stunning fish. They really deserve to be in a planted tank, so I want to get as many eggs as I can out of them, and then I want to move them to a planted tank. This next tank is just full of L181 peppermint plecos. This most recent batch of fry, I think I, think I counted 116 of them <laughs> in one clutch, which is insane. Uh, but I've got a really good male that's just, he's doing an awesome job fanning the eggs. So this is like the third or fourth batch he's given me of these guys. These are not sellable size yet, but I will let you guys know as soon as they are. There's a ton of people asking about them because they are just, <laughs> they're so dang cute. Look at them. I got some yellow shrimp in here too. And yeah, they're they're growing really well. I've only lost a couple of them. And I've got, yeah, probably about 110 in here. This next tank is Melitania Trifasciata Blythe River Collection Point. So these Trifasciata are a uh, more of a dark red. And I got a really good example. When we get to the 90 gallon upstairs, you'll see them. They got this really beautiful dark red body. Those are one of my favorite rainbows. This next 20 gallon is full of Celestial Pearl Danios. I actually didn't know how much I had in here till last night when I was packing. Uh, I had three orders of these last night and I could not believe how many fish are in here. There is a ton of fish in here. A big clump of java moss that they just kind of swim in and out of. I'm sure they're laying eggs in there, some of them. Um, they are still juveniles, but they grow pretty quickly. All I feed them is baby brine shrimp, although they'll eat, you know, they're not picky. They'll eat flakes, they'll eat micro foods. This next tank, there is a couple Blythe River in here. But then these are also where my Myrisi are at. Melitania Myrisi. Beautiful, beautiful fish. They get like this hot pink coloration. 
Uh, they kind of look like the Kalitawas in some ways. They got the red tail, but then they've got a bright pink head and this bluish um, pinkish body. You can see they've got some beautiful coloration. They're in a more of a planted tank. So they get like this hot pink to their finnage. These are still pretty small. There is a parva in here too. <laughs> There's also some hill stream loaches in here as well. I'm thinking about breaking this whole tank down. We're just putting uh, aqua soil on the bottom, just some plants. This will be my Cali Tower grow out. Most of my tanks have an insane amount of duckweed and frog bit and dwarf water lettuce. This dark tank is home to a lot of emerald rasporas. They really like this tank actually because they're kind of a shy fish. So they, they like the, the dark tanks. It's kind of probably a little more comfortable for them. When I'm not right in front of the tank, they are right in front. But uh, the second I walk up to it, they retreat. But a beautiful, beautiful nano fish. They're just a little more shy. Prefer a lot of cover. This tank is one of my favorite tanks because it's just so dang cool. There is just an enormous amount of wandering dude growing out of it. I've got some pathos, I think, too, growing out of it back here. And there's just a ton of uh, baby CPDs in here. See a bunch of them swim around in the back. I'll let them reach sellable size in here and then I'll move them over. And the plants are definitely helping me with the filtration. A lot of this plant growing. Maybe um, if you want a cutting of this, send me a message uh, when you put your order in and I'll just, I'll send you one for free. And then you just take it and you just jam it in one of your tanks. Or if you got a filter, you can just kind of put it in the top of your filter like that and it'll start growing. Okay, so up here is a tank of fry of the Allen Iowa Pogo Red variety. This next tank has some baby CPDs as well as some baby Kelly Tawas in here. This next tank is completely empty. It's just got some flame moss in it, which looks pretty cool actually. This next tank, this is a female from my 93 gallon Chindongo Saluzi Mbuna tank. Don't know anything about Mbunas, I've never kept them before, but I know that they're mouth brooders. And I noticed that this female seemed like she had something in her mouth. I did a little bit of research and found that they can hold their eggs in their mouth for two to three weeks before uh, letting the fry out. So I took a guess. I caught her, put her in this 10-gallon tank, and I'm glad I did because there's a bunch of fry in here now. But yeah, really excited to watch these guys grow up and hopefully I have a bunch of females. So this next tank is full of common plecos. I don't have a place for these guys, and there's way too many plecos in a 10-gallon tank right now. So if you want a free Pleco, just use the promo code Pleco uh, on checkout and I'll throw an extra one. I'll throw one of these in for free for you. And then the last tank on this rack is just full of Cali Tawa Fry. I can see there's a couple in here with some swim bladder issues that I haven't pulled out yet. But for the most part, they're, I think most of these are eating baby brine shrimp at this point. Okay, this top 75 gallon tank is full of L181 Plecos. I think I probably have about 30 of these guys in here still. I just put some more up on the website for sale. I've got some opaline gouramis that we've bred ourselves. So the opalines are the blue ones. And then we've got some pearl gouramis that we bred ourselves. Some of these are getting pretty big already. So I really am trying to get rid of these. That's why I have them buy one, get one free. They make a beautiful centerpiece fish for medium to large aquariums. Very easy to breed, very easy to sex. Someday I'll make a video on how to breed them. Uh, I do have a little short showing them breeding. That was pretty cool. Uh, we just got a nice pot of water sprite growing in the middle of this. Kind of keeping the tank nice and clean. This bottom 75 gallon is full of... This tank is full of Rosario Lacourt Bozeman Eye. Beautiful, beautiful fish. I've got some adults up in my 90 gallon. These are given to me as a gift and I started breeding them and they're super prolific. So very easy to breed. These are all buy one, get one free too. So these were line bred by Rosario Lacourt to get the most orange coloration possible. I really shouldn't have them in a clear tank like this. They should be in a painted tank. You really see their colors better that way. But you put them in a planted tank or a dark tank and you're going to see that the coloration really pop. This tank is full of raccoon tetras from Dan's Fish. Uh, given to me for free from an an anonymous friend. Thank you very much. You know who you are. And um, I only had six of them, and they just started breeding in the tank. Now I have, I don't know, probably 20 at least. 
So I gotta get these guys into a bigger tank. There's a nice male. They're not really showing off right now, but when they do, it's gorgeous. This next 10 gallon is full of ram's horn snails and some of my yellow shrimp. Kind of hard to see in here. There's way too many plants. I'm going to have to clear some of these plants away and I'm going to be moving these shrimp again too, but these are really cool shrimp. This next 10 gallon has some Venezuelan orange corridoras in it. I got from Dan's Fish. Beautiful, beautiful orange color. Um, I actually had a huge batch of fry growing out from these guys and then they all just kind of died so I'm not sure what I did wrong I haven't really actively tried to breed them since but I should because they're beautiful and then there's just an absolute chunk of java moss in this tank I think I have a pair of Rosario Lacourt Bozemani in here they came over as eggs on this moss and I just never took them out so they just kind of live along with uh, the quarries this next tank is my breeding group of Celestial Pearl Daniels. So this is the best of the best, my original group of six, and then I bought another group of about six from another source. And then I've kept some of their um, young too. And um, they've been producing really nice fry. So I'm, I'm happy with this group of CPDs. If you're interested in this little contraption, it was my last video I posted, my most recent video talks about this. Um, and it's just catching eggs every day. Got some more babies growing up in here, CPDs. So I got a decent little amount of CPDs in there. And I've got a little bit of CPDs in here. Another 10 gallon of CPDs. So they got a lot of Celestial Pearl Danios. I also have them growing up at like 68 degrees. So they're gonna grow kind of slow in this tank. I haven't really bad luck with heaters lately. So fish that don't need heaters, they're not getting heaters because I've had quite a few heaters lately um, blow up on me and kill the whole tank. And in here we've got some Gertrudei, blue eyes. Uh, these were just on some plants. All the originals I had passed away because I think they only lived for like 18 months. I'll probably be putting them in the newest aquascape. This is my attempt at copying Master Breeder Dean's fry system. I only got three trays in there. The fourth tray is up here right now. A nice big pothos growing on it. That looks really cool. The trays need a little bit of a vacuum. There's a lot of snail poop in there, but these are my Kelly Towel rainbows. They're all being really shy, but they're in there. So you see them back there. Got some ram's horn snails in the in the fry boxes, kind of eat, eating all the uneaten food, but then they do produce waste as well. This next tray is just ram's horn snails, nothing else. And then this next tray is some more CPDs. So I have a ton of these. They're super easy to breed, honestly. I already talked about the 29 gallon. It's a cool looking tank, but I'm gonna be taking it down and repurposing it for a plant growing tank and a Kalitawa growing tank. I think that'd be really sick. This is a five gallon tank full of Ember Tetras. I don't really know how to breed them. They've just bred in every tank I've kept them in. And then I'll end up with like one or two extra that I didn't have before. As you can see, there's one in this tank too that I never caught. This top 40 gallon is my L181 breeding tank i have i think like maybe eight adults in here and i also put some of my melatonia cali moise in here this is my personal favorite rainbow fish they like they change colors throughout the day it's really cool right now they've got like what i kind of call like the halloween orange and the dark black stripe horizontal stripe sometimes they're not very good to look at other times it's like they're just insane and my idea is to take all the cali moise out of this bottom tank and put them up here so I just have one big tank full of them. If I have any extras that uh, I don't think are gonna fit in here, I'll certainly put them on the website to sell because these are these are really cool fish. I really absolutely love them. So down here are the rest of my Cali Moises. I, I have quite a bit. I think this is like a Calico Common Pleco. That's the mom of all the free ones I'm giving away. And I have a ton of quarries in here too. I will be giving away buy one get one free quarries too because I have too many of these guys in here. These are the Trilineatus. They're the false Julie quarry cat. This 75 gallon tank was in the wall of my bedroom growing up. I made a little river aquascape for one of my favorite rainbow fish. These are Chilothrina blairi. They've got a beautiful elongated body shape. They're very fast. They're ferocious eaters. Like you gotta wear goggles when you put 
flakes in because they just they slap the water it's really cool they've got like this beautiful green body with this dark red tail let me pull the light forward and show you what i'm talking about so it kills me to do this because i love these fish but they're all buy one get one free there'll be a very limited amount of these available just because i really like the way this tank looks full of these beautiful strain of blair eye though they've got some beautiful coloration and they're always always showing off even the little dudes are always showing off. So they've got this bright gold breeding stripe on the top of their head. And you can see it from across the room, man. I mean, it's insane. My friend Steve has a 220 gallon tank full of these. It's a species only tank pretty much. And just gorgeous. Uh, it's got one piece of manzanita wood coming from the top left corner. And it's covered in like a natural string algae, which I think actually looks really cool. I do pull out some of it out of there every water change. Some more wood over here. Just a bunch of river rock from a landscape supply store. Try to make it like a river style tank and i um, really happy with it. I really like sitting and watching this one, which is good because it's right next to my desk. And speaking of my desk, I had this hardscape done and I just couldn't get Monte Carlo to grow in it. So I kind of gave up, drained it, let it sit on my desk for a long time just got some random cherry shrimp in here all different colors no heater it's just my extra angelfish and extra garamis and odds and ends in here this tank i got for free i broke the middle brace so i was being held together by two wood clamps so eventually i'm just going to throw it away but for now it's an extra spot for some extra fish in here um but yeah i mean eh. it's it's completely filthy the fish are really healthy actually, and that's all that really matters. This was my very first aquarium, kind of what started the whole hobby for me. I know what you're thinking, there's probably way too many fish in here, and there is. I had a 60 gallon explode and I needed to put the fish somewhere, so this is kind of a display tank. Quite a high my amount of CO2 from it are in it right now, but this is a good tank to look at some of the bigger versions of what I'm selling. So that's a parvo right there. We've got the Blythe River Trifasciata. Really, really cool fish. I do have some turquoise rainbow fish in here. Melatania lacustris in here. Lacustris in here. That are too small to breed, but I'll be breeding those eventually. There's a Rosario Lacort male. These are these are beautiful. Pearl Garami in a planted tank. They're just, we see how beautiful they are. I'm not sure if this is one of the males I bred. But with some blue LEDs, you can see that they've got that blue pattern on them. Looks really nice in a planted tank. There's a Myrosai male with his hot pink breeding stripe. These guys are really pretty. Bright, really bright pink. Ooh, there's a Kelly Moisey back there. We just looked at him downstairs. Now this one's got more of a yellow on his head. See that blue sheen on the top of his head? Absolutely beautiful. So actually most of these rainbow fish were brought up from eggs. It's a long process. I mean, you have to be very patient with some of these, but it is totally worth the wait. So when I build the new fish room, every species is gonna have its own tank. So a lot of these fish will be taken out of this tank. But for now, they're just getting lots of water changes and they seem to be really happy. So I'm not going to talk about this tank too much. This is my newest aquascape. I actually am making a video about it right now. But it's a 16 gallon water box, rimless aquarium. I've got a Oazi, I think 350 thermo and injecting some inline CO2. I'm uh, really excited about this tank. It's going to look really, really good when it grows in. Um, Went for more of a nature style uh, with just some rocks and some wood and tried to make it look cool. I mean, this is when you walk into the house, that's what you see. Lots of different plants in here. They're all just kind of just starting to grow now. Got a little bit of diatom algae outbreak in here. And I've got some of my yellow shrimp in here as well. Really excited to see this tank grow in. I like to breed fish, but... I also really enjoy the aquascaping side of things. And this channel is mostly about breeding fish, but 
Thought it'd be fun to make an aquascaping video too. So sorry I didn't clean the glass, but I did eventually move those Kelly Moisey up just to the top tank. This is the future fish room. Guys, I'm really excited about this room. I've been wanting to do something like this for a little while now. Stuff is finally starting to happen. Okay, so the room is in my basement. It's partitioned off with a stud wall, not load bearing or anything. I think this used to be like a, a wood shop. The room is 26 feet long by 12 feet wide. So it's about 320 square feet. The electric in this room is done. Okay, so this is the door you walk into. We can turn left and we see we've got a, a single window here. And if we look right down the length of the room, that is the rest of the room. Um, it's in my basement. I have a walkout basement so you can see how the uh, concrete walls just kind of come down like that until you can literally walk out this door here. There's a door right here that I can walk out. So it's going to be really easy to bring tanks in here. My old man and I spent a whole day doing the electric together. There are uh, 26 GFI protected outlets. Each box is independent of each other. So if I trip the GFI in one of these, it's not going to trip over here. I have three outlets and a ceiling on switches so I can switch off maybe my air pump and maybe some circulation fans. So if I'm gonna shoot a video, it'll bring that noise down so it'll be easier to hear me. I put some can lights in. So I just did six dimmable cans and I don't always want it this bright. So we put the cans on a dimmer. So we can dim it down. We're just chilling in here. We don't need a whole lot of light. Maybe we just wanna watch a movie or something and look at the tanks. Or if I'm working on something, I wanna be able to turn it up. And then this switch here controls three outlets in the ceiling. If I wanna put the air pump on this outlet, I can turn it on and off with a switch, which I, I think would be really cool. But I think I would make it a smart switch that turned on automatically every night, just so that it would eliminate the chance of me accidentally leaving that off. And guys, I'm totally open to suggestions because I've never designed a fish room before. So there's probably a lot of stuff I'm not thinking about. But I'm going to keep this desk. I'm going to paint it black. I have a natural gas heater that is direct vented out the exterior wall. It uses all outside air for combustion. So I shouldn't have any issues with CO or anything like that. And I'm going to maintain the room temperature at around 78 Honestly, when you start talking about heating this many tanks, it's going to be way more efficient if I can just um, really insulate this room and heat this room to, you know, 78, 80 degrees year round. Okay, so my original idea was to do uh, racks of 75 gallon grow out tanks going down this first wall. So maybe two, four, six, 75 gallon tanks on this wall. This wall was going to be all 20 highs pretty much on my black rack for rainbow fish breeding. So just all 20 highs probably and tens. This whole wall is all 40 gallon tanks. I think I can get three high. If I do three high, I can fit a lot of 40s on this wall. Right here will be the desk. Right here is gonna be the natural gas heater. So maybe I'll place it up a little higher so I can put stuff underneath it. Right here is gonna be all 10 gallon tanks on this wall here. Possibly some maybe dry storage. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do on this wall yet. Uh, one other thing was uh, I might do a third row of tanks right down the middle of this room too why not so yeah guys i know it's still right in the beginning stages but i'm really excited for this fish room i can't wait to build it it's really gonna take my hobby to the next level and thank you guys so much for your support it really does mean a lot to me without your support on the website and uh, subscribing and stuff like that i could not afford to do this so thank you so much for your support i really appreciate it and we'll see you on the next video and as soon as this video posts for about two weeks, we're gonna have an awesome sale, probably the biggest sale we're gonna have all year. Buy one, get one free on all rainbow fish. Buy one, get one free on all garamis. Free common pleco with any order and 20% off all celestial pearl danios. So if you're interested, check out my website, sydneysangels.com. There's gonna be a chance for three people to win a mop of eggs from one of the three most rare species of rainbow fish I have. If you're interested in winning some eggs from some rainbow fish, completely free shipped to your door so you can hatch out rainbow fish yourself. Stick around and I'll tell you how you can win that too.